so hey everyone welcome back to the channel in this video we will be solving the problem boundary traversal of matrix so let's read the problem statement out so we are given a matrix of dimensions n cross m the task is to perform boundary traversal of the matrix in a clockwise manner so this problem is going to be very easy but there is a trick that you need to know so watch the video till the end then only you can understand this problem in more depth so let's say our input is n equal to 4 and m equal to 4 so this is a 4 cross 4 matrix so you will be traversing the first row so 1 2 3 4 will be there now you will be traversing 8 12 and 16 now in order to take the end column elements we will not take this 4 again okay so 4 8 12 16 will be there similarly 15 14 13 will be there and 9 comma 5 will be there so this is going to be our output so the expected time complexity for this problem is going to be order of n plus m and the expected space complexity is going to be order of n right so i hope you have understood the problem statement let's discuss this problem in more detail so let's say our matrix is like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. okay so what you will be doing first you will be traversing the first row right now since you have taken all these elements you can take these elements now then again these elements then this element okay but the problem with this approach is that you might end up doing or you might end up taking multiple elements so how can we avoid that you might think okay let's take a visited array if we have taken a cell we will not visit it again but taking a visited array and you will be tra versing the whole matrix that will be taking order of n plus m time but the visited array will take a order of n plus m space as well right because we are concerned with the boundary elements only right so visited array will be taking this much space but we need to optimize it so in order to optimize that solution what we can do so if you want to do a simple traversal like this that approach will work well if the matrix is n cross n but according to the problem statement our matrix is nothing but n cross n so we need to take care of the repeating elements okay so in order to optimize that let's say our matrix is like this first of all we will be having a start row we will be taking four pointers basically for the start row for the end row for the start column and end column so start column will be here and end column will be here okay so end column will be initialized with m minus 1 because m is going to be the number of columns start column will be 0 start row will be 0 end row will be n minus 1 because n is the size number of rows so these will be our four variables which will help us in order to identify so that we don't take the repeating elements so first, let's travel the first row so in order to travel the first row we will not be require any of these pointers but where these pointers are going to help us let's say we are having start row which has crossed the end row right then we will be making the use of that but for the first row we can simply travel that so let's write a for loop for int i equal to 0 i less than m i plus plus since we are concerned with the first row so that can be accessed using matrix of 0 and i okay so this will indicate the row and this will indicate the column okay so since row is fixed we have taken 0 here and then i right so the work for first row is over now since you have traversed the first row let's increment our start row start row will become 1 now okay so let's update that you will travel this 8 12 and 16 this you can also simply travel for int i equal to 1 i less than n i plus plus now here we have started our iteration from position 1 not 0 okay because we don't need to take 4 again in order to access the last column elements since column will be fixed but row will be variable so matrix of i and here the last column will be m minus 1 now since we have taken the last column right so int column will be come here so int column will be decremented right now in order to take this row again we need to check whether our start row is 
lesser than or equal to end row okay it might be the case that start row has exceeded end row right so in that case we will not be taking the elements because in that case if we take the elements that will be a case of repeating nature so we will avoid that so for that we can simply check if end row is greater than equal to start row then you can do your traversal okay so for int i equal to basically it will start from nothing but m minus 2 so m minus 2 i greater than equal to 0 i minus minus okay and uh, we will be traversing the last row elements so last row will can be accessed by n minus 1 and this will be accessed by i okay you can take a simple variable i so this was about the end row we will do a dry run don't worry for that in order to understand this better now we need to traverse the first column so for that you can again check if the start column is less than equal to end column okay so these two cases are similar so we are using the four variables in order to solve our purpose so for we need to take the first row element so for int i equal to this will be nothing but n minus 2 for int i equal to n minus 2 i greater than equal to 1 i minus minus and the first row elements can be accessed using sorry the first column elements can be accessed using i comma this will be 0 so in order to do this problem we will be requiring four loops this for loop will be running for max m times this will be running for n times this will be running for again m times and this will be running for n times so overall our complexity is going to be 2 into n plus m which is approximately order of n plus m and since we are using four variables our time complexity for this is going to be order of okay i hope you have understood the problem let's do a dry run so let's say my matrix is like this 7 8 9 our start row is going to be 0 initially end row is going to be at n minus 1 so n is going to be 3 so end row will be 2 start column will be 0 and end column will be 2 okay now we will be traversing this so let's take 1 2 3 now start row will be incremented to 1 okay at this point of time when we have traversed all the elements now we will be taking 6 and 9 so 6 and 9 right now we will be decrementing end column so end column will become 1 now in order to take these elements we need to check our start column should be lesser than end column so we have taken this 8 and 7 because our start column is less than end column so 8 and 7 will come now for this you can check our start row should be lesser than end row so 1 is lesser than 2 so we can take this 4 up so now in this way we can traverse the whole matrix right now if let's say our matrix is like this 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 in this case our start row is going to be 0 end row will be nothing but 1 start column will be 0 and end column will be nothing but 2 now we can travel this right so 1 2 3 now start row will increment to 1 right that is fine uh, now we can travel this 6 so end column will come to 1 right in the next step now we can check our start column should be less than or equal to end column yes it is so we can take 5 and 4 right at this point of time our start row and end row are at same position right so we don't need to take this one again right because we have already taken so that's how our start row and end row is helping us in order to achieve that problem so i hope you have understood the problem let's discuss the implementation so first of all we have taken a vector of end answer we will be travel taking the four variables as i told you start row is equal to zero start column will be initially 0, end row is going to be n-1 and end column is going to be m-1. 
now we will be taking a for loop in order to iterate on the first row elements so we can take start row because it will be initially 0 and i okay and start row will be incremented right now we will be taking for int i equal to 1 i less than n and i plus plus because we need to travel the last column so we can put up end column here because that will be constant for that point of time and end column will be minus minus now we can check before picking the last row elements basically the end row should be greater than or equal to the start row so in order to do that we have applied this check and we can have a for loop and we can decrement our end row similarly for taking the first column elements right we can have a for loop that will be running from n minus 2 to i greater than or equal to 1 i minus minus and we can push this into our answer vector and we can increment our start column the time complexity for this is going to be n plus m and the space complexity is going to be nothing but order of one only so i hope you have understood the problem if you have any doubts write it down in the comments like this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel thanks for watching guys